The John Singleton Embrace LA Short Film Competition is the result of a partnership between the City of Los Angeles and the Pan-African Film and Arts Festival under LA City Council President Emeritus Herb Weston Jr.'s Embrace LA initiative. We wanted to do something that was genuine. We wanted to do something that some folk could appreciate. And it was my son who said, government's most important responsibility is to create opportunities so that people can create their own opportunities. So we began talking about some kind of a competition with some kind of a stipend. And then we went to Babu and Sherry and they put together a phenomenal competition. And I wanna ask you to give both of them another round of applause. It's designed to honor Singleton's cinematic legacy while simultaneously celebrating his unapologetic approach to filmmaking. Three talented submission winners were chosen to receive $20,000 each for the production and completion of a live action narrative short film based on their submitted screenplay. Collectively, we are excited to premiere the winning filmmakers artistry and shine a light on their continuing creative content journey. Let's take a look at that process. Hi, my name is Chelsea Hicks, and I am one of the winners of the John Singleton Embrace LA Short Film Competition, and my film is Contraband. I'm Genesis Scott. I'm Brandon Hammond. And we are the creators of Amaru. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's TJ Ali, the writer and producer of the short film The Lifted, and I'm incredibly excited and grateful for the city of LA, the Pan-African Film Festival, as well as the John Singleton Embrace LA Short Film Competition. I always feel like the cheapest way to make a movie is to write it. The hardest thing to do besides write a great screenplay, which is a hard mountain, to, it's like climbing Everest, is to write a great screenplay. And the second hardest thing to do, the next mountain to call, is, is to get somebody to actually read your thing. John Singleton is one of was and is a huge inspiration to me. I actually did a project on him in film school prior to even hearing about this competition where it was basically a mini documentary about his life's work. And so it is definitely a full circle moment for me to be able to win a competition in honor of his legacy. The first like movie that I kind of really saw in like the theater that I that I can recall was Boys in the Hood. Ricky! You know, for me, I, I almost ask, like, how can John Singleton not be an inspiration? Um, if you're a young black filmmaker, um, you know, I, I think about just the types of stories that he told, um, unapologetically black stories. Um, he loved to represent his city. You know, obviously, Boys in the Hood is you know, it was the first time I felt um, there was like a realistic betrayal of that particular neighborhood. Either they don't know, don't show, or don't care about what's going on in the hood. We had the privilege of watching like interviews where he talked about doing Boys in the Hood and he talked about them wanting to get another director. They were testing me. They were saying, you know, hey, what if we tell you you want to buy your script and get somebody else to direct it? And I said, well, we have to end this meeting right now. And they're like, oh, you know. And I said, well, because I'm going to direct this movie. And, I, you know, the whole thing I did was like, I got to act like, you know, nobody wants to give you nothing if you act like you really need it. So you got to be like, you know, part of that is a little hustle. It's like, okay, well, fine, bye. And I didn't have a pot to piss in. I was like, but I was like that. I was like, because I had to, you know, I wanted to do it my way. And they saw that he was willing to walk yeah. away from whatever deal they were going to give him mm -hmm. because that's how much he believed in his story and that's how much he believed in himself. So yeah. John is just right. an incredible inspiration. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. It's Sherry Sneed. How are you today? Good, how are you? I'm excellent. When I found out I won, I was actually at work and I got a phone call from a random number 
and I ended up just letting it go to voicemail because I had no clue who it was and come to find out it was Sherry Sneed calling me and she told me to call her back and I called her back immediately. Well, I've got some great news for you. You are one of our three winners. I was super nervous, super excited, super grateful and couldn't believe that I actually was given this opportunity. I did not even think I would win. And I remember getting the call from Sherry. Um, she said she had called Genesis first. <laughs> and I guess Genesis missed the call. Yeah. So I got the call I and the I was just, I couldn't believe it. Uh, this is Sherry Steed with the Pan African Film Festival John Singleton <laughs> Screenplay Competition. And you guys are one of our three winners. <laughs> I got a call from Ms. Sherry Sneed and the Pan-African Film Festival that basically said, hey, you were in our top 10 and your script scored pretty well and a winner dropped out. So what are you doing with your life? What are, where are you? So I'm definitely in the headspace of wanting and having the team that I can put together to produce a really wonderful, strong film. And uh, I would be honored to be considered to be to get this grant and also uh, to move forward. Excellent. Excellent. Next thing you know, I was offered a slot in the John Singleton and Brace LA 2020 squad. Uh, so yeah, part of my testimony is that I was in the top 10 in February 2020 and I lost. And I think that what's beautiful about that message is the fact that who the person that I was maybe creatively, personally, emotionally at that time probably wasn't ready for this, you know? And then a pandemic happens. A year and a half goes by and I get this incredible honor in honor of John Singleton. And uh, I'm just ex extremely grateful and excited to be here. Amaru is about a young African-American teen who discovers he has a rare superpower. And that superpower is that he is impervious to white supremacy. Uh, the story is inspired by the life of Tupac Shakur particularly the 1993 incident in which he uh, saw two uh, undercover police officers brutalizing an unarmed black man. Um, he came to that black man's aid and shot the officers. And while he was charged uh, for that, the charges were dropped. And Genesis and I, uh, we thought about that and said, you know, that's some superhero stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, can't imagine a black man shooting two police officers today and getting off on that. Yeah, so that's how we was like, what would that look like if uh, someone uh, had the superpower that they weren't uh, basically afflicted by the things that uh, are common for a lot of African-Americans to kind of be afflicted by, so, you know? So it uh, it's a wild journey, so. And we're happy to bring that to you. Contraband is a story that takes place in a society where Black, Indigenous, people of color have become a majority in America. And as a result, the powers that be have implemented a ban to prevent these communities from reproducing. I was inspired to write this story during film school when I had a class called Script Analysis, where we had an assignment to write our own screenplay. And while I was brainstorming, I knew that I wanted to talk about Black people. I knew that I wanted to talk about the future. And I knew that I wanted to create a really unique concept. And I was really into Black Mirror and Handmaid's Tale and the idea of population control. And so the idea I ended up landing on was the concept of population control in relation to racism. Because I had come across a statistic that white people are becoming a minority in America. And I was also pulling from the history of sterilization against black women to inspire the tale. The horrific exposure of forced hysterectomies at an ICE jail in Georgia has forced a reckoning with the U.S.'s long history of sterilizations, particularly of black, brown, poor, and disabled people. Mississippi appendectomies became a nickname for unnecessary hysterectomies on black women. Doctors arbitrarily sterilized patients they deemed unfit to reproduce, and the eugenics laws at the time allowed it. So the question I ended up asking myself is, if white people felt a threat to their power as a result of their population numbers declining, how would they respond? And my answer to that was, well, they would just stop 
BIPOC people from reproducing. And thus, contraband was born. My dad, he owns a barbershop in Chicago. So growing up, I got to see and hear the stories of different types of black folks who are really incredible and moving and shaking and struggling and, and having incredible stories. And today, my dad often expresses his discomfort with the fact that generationally, the OGs right now and the millennials, we're not really on the same page. And it was really important for me to write a story that not only up, uh, uplifted women, but also showed that generational gapping being connected, right? So you see these women who are our elders seeing a young woman in peril and they decide to say, eh, well, one of them decides to say, I'm not going to allow what I know is gonna happen to happen. And I think that is a message that we can all connect with, right? Like when you see something, say something. Often men are our superheroes and women aren't necessarily at the forefront. And so once I started to hear these stories about my female and women friends having these experiences, I was like, yo, where we at? Fellas, where we at? Why are we showing up and using our voice, using our art and using our voices to help and make a difference? As a writer and as an artist, I've learned that I have a duty and a responsibility to use my voice for social impact. And also, it's our responsibility to check on each other. It's our responsibility to extend grace. It's, our, it's a part of our responsibility to remind each other that we are all superheroes and we can all extend our love and our support to our loved ones. So shout out to the aunties, shout out to black women who are always saving the day, shout out to women, and shout out to anyone who has felt marginalized and unheard. February of 2020, the Filmmakers Summit, curated with seasoned professionals in entertainment, provided the winners practical business and creative advice through a variety of presentations and workshops. The John Singleton Summit was truly inspiring and priceless. I cannot put a value on getting to hear from so many Black people in different aspects and different spaces and different departments in this industry. And it's a reminder that diversity is not just in front of the camera, it is behind the camera. And I think just being surrounded by fellow creatives does something to you. It does something to your creative muscle. It makes you want to get better. It makes you want to help. Um, you constantly are thinking about ways to improve your own self. And it truly, it truly was life changing having to speak with these advisors, black women. I love black women to get to speak to them and hear what they felt about our scripts and improve on our scripts to see the dedication and level of people pouring into our work, that's going to change. It has changed me and it will continue to change me. Um, I always say people love to tell young creatives, go out and do it, just do it, just do it. Um, but no one's putting the coins behind it. No one's putting the tools. No one's giving us the resources. And this filmmaking program is doing exactly that. All right, day one. How you feeling? I'm feeling everything. Okay. Every, every single thing. Um, I haven't slept yet, and, uh, but I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm honored. I'm happy. I'm everything. First day, how you feeling? I'm nervous. You nervous? What did, what did I tell you? What are you? I'm not filming. That's right. That's right. The team is on lock. The team is excited. The team is here. Excellent. We're going to make movie magic. Excellent. Shout out to PAFF. There you, you go. got it. <laughs> Taking this project from script to screen was definitely no easy feat. There were a lot of tears shed, a lot of laughs had, a lot of long nights, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of money spent. It was challenging, you know, I, I want to be honest about that. It was, it was challenging, um, you know, there were a lot of hiccups you know mm -hmm. number one the, the pandemic we won this right before the pandemic <laughs> yeah, before the world changed but, you know you get a call in august 2021 you have the turn of film in by january 1 you don't really have much time you know and that gave me a couple panic attacks <laughs> if i'm being honest my roommate shout out to trey is also my casting director and it's the second that i got home when i received that call from miss sherry sneed i walked up to him and was like i think we're about to make a movie we need a producer and from there it was just like the pieces of a puzzle just kind of came together i'm so happy 
happy to have y'all here. And I just, I know we can't do hands, but I want everyone to put their hands in. Yes. And I want you, when I say three, I want you to say smile our sunshine for the soul, okay? One, two, three. Smile our sunshine, sunshine for the soul. All right, go team. Let's get to work. Being on sets was a little crazy because my story was a tad complicated. Hey, let's go with some real sounds. Let's go, Let's go, camera. I had a lot of shots to get in there. Shout out to Steadicam, because without Steadicam, I don't think we would have been able to have half of the shots that we got. Honestly, All our star cast, cast was amazing, impeccable. Yeah. So understanding, so yeah. patient, and so good. <laughs> <laughs> it amazed, like, it's like a lot of times, especially because of like all this stuff that was happening, yeah. we would often run like down to the wire. And yeah. then some of the cast would be like, look, we know it, we got it, we can get it for you. <laughs> yes. One take. I definitely was feeling the pressure each day, just trying to get through scenes, especially as a first time director it was very difficult. Having Shayla Raquel jump on this board as our director, having Sarah Garth jump down as our DP, Trey as my casting director, Cameron Wood as our first AD, and Jace Barron as my co-producer, like the Avengers were assembled. And we were like, okay, we got a month of pre-production and we have to jump into production in the month of November to immediately jump into post. And I'm incredibly grateful that these people flew in from the DMV. I have my makeup and hair artist who I've been friends with since high school. She flew in from Chicago. A really good friend of mine from high school flew in from Atlanta. And people just kind of assembled in a way of like, okay, what you need? Where are we at? Let's just go. We tried to, yeah. you know, put people around us yeah. that we know and trust. I know like some of my best friends uh, are producers on this. Genesis, I know some of your best friends are producers on this and, yeah. you know, their work ethic yeah. and passion and understanding um it has been just incredible um, you know making a movie um in general is uh difficult and you're gonna have obstacles along the way um but um if you have the right people around you you can get through it despite all the challenges there were many beautiful lessons along the way and i feel just really inspired by all the people that I was surrounded by, all of the very talented cast and crew that was a part of this team. I'm just glad we were able to do it and even do it during a pandemic and everybody was healthy. Everybody made it to set safely and that's that was most important for me. There's nothing like going through something difficult and coming out on the other end of it, um, still feeling proud and accomplished um, and like it's what you want to do. The beauty of indie filmmaking and artistry is that you have to just make it happen. And there is no room for error, but even when there are errors, you handle yourself with grace and share love. And Miss Sherry Snead could tell you, our crew is so full of love and generosity and passion that I couldn't have asked for a better team of Avengers to bring this film to life. I feel like maybe the most important aspect of making a film is your team. Who do you have around you? And you definitely have to have uh, the right team that is focused on making the best film um, possible and also like executing your vision. I would advise anyone that's going through this process to really just stay true to yourself because you're the only person that knows what story that you want to tell and what speaks to you. And so I think once you focus on making sure that you're satisfied with your art, it'll, it'll take less pressure. It'll take pressure away from you feeling like you have to please everyone. As an indie guy who's an artist, I just want to say never give up because at the end of the day, you never know when that beautiful divine timing and that opportunity is going to come knocking your way. You just got to be ready. Do the work, be humble, be grateful, smile, and always remember, we're not in this alone. It's a wrap! Woo!
Thank you so much to Sherry Sneed for really guiding me on this journey. You have been a huge help, a huge advisor, a huge everything. Of course, we love our Miss Sherry. Miss Sherry, just, you know, jokes aside, we love Miss Sherry. Um, but just the care and the love that she has for us as filmmakers and how much she wants us to succeed and you can see it in like who she orchestrated to come talk to us and making sure that all aspects of that summit was covered accommodation food oh we ate we ate good she's been an advocate a mentor and advisor an advisor just yeah. incredibly, incredibly. Yeah, and I know we bugger, like, you know, we be <laughs> like, we like, what does this mean? How do we do this? I don't even, you know, right. and she, you and know. She's been there to, to answer all the questions we have. I just want to say shout out to the city of LA, to the Pan-African Film Festival organization, all of the contestants who submitted, because I know what it feels like to get told no. And I was told no, and here I am. So shout out to everyone who's written, continue to write, continue to inspire. Thank you to the John Singleton Embrace LA short film competition. And thank you to all of the judges and the panels who read our scripts and made their, and made their decisions. I am super grateful to the Pan African Film Festival and the city of Los Angeles for this opportunity. Getting to see my vision being brought to life on the big screen is one I could have never imagined. We definitely um, want to thank uh, the city of Los Angeles, uh, the Pan-African Film Festival, uh, Embrace LA. We want to thank them for supporting emerging Black filmmakers who, you know, a lot of times they have the talent but may not get the recognition um, and really highlighting that. And also me as a Black woman getting this opportunity, I, it just means so much. To John Singleton's family, it has been an honor to follow in his cinematic footsteps and I hope that after seeing this project you are proud of what we created in honor of his legacy and I'm super grateful to be here. On behalf of John Singleton and his cinematic legacy, yes. he would be amazingly proud. I've always approached motion pictures from a standpoint and maybe I've been naive um, that I, I'm trying to make films that, that, that will inspire me to make more films, you know? So I'm not just, I'm not walking through the work. I'm trying to make films that I can be, that I'm very passionate about, that hopefully in, in creating these pictures, I can inspire other people to be passionate about my work.